Okay, so we are still on page 66 of the workbook here. We're going to complete uh, this exercise number one, where they gave us a function and asked us information about how the function is behaving. We already did the part where it's increasing and decreasing, and now we're being asked to figure out where this function is concave up and concave down, and also where its inflection points are. Okay, so in contrast to part A, this is asking us, or to answer this question, we need to talk about the second derivative, all right? And we already calculated the first derivative in part A. I'm just going to write it down again so that we've got it in front of us. Mm. We came up with a formula that looked like 3x squared plus 6x minus 24. Okay, we're interested in the second derivative, so let's calculate that together. Okay, if we take the derivative of this, we're going to get 6x plus 6, just using the power rule, and we need to set that equal to 0. Remember that what we're about to do is to make a second derivative sign chart. Okay, we can do some factoring here. Pull out a 6, and we get 6 times x plus 1 equals 0, which, which leads us to one solution that looks like x equals negative 1. Hmm. Okay, so we really have only one number. In, in, in our sign chart in this case. So we'll make our number line. There's only one place where that second derivative is zero. It's negative one. We're gonna make a sign chart for the second derivative based on that now. Hmm. Okay, so just as before, we need to pick some test values. All right, so I'm gonna change colors on you here. And we've got two zones in this case. Numbers that are less than negative 1 over here to the left and numbers over here to the right that are bigger than negative 1. So we just need two test values in this case. Mm. So let's pick ourselves a nice number that's less than negative 1. How about negative 2? And a nice number that's bigger than negative 1 is 0 in this case. Mm. Okay. And... We're going to take these numbers one by one and plug them into the second derivative. We're interested in, again, whether that second derivative is positive or negative. Let's start with the negative 2. All right, so if we take that and plug it into the second derivative, okay, I'm going to take the factored form of the second derivative, this part that I'm underlying. That's where we're going to plug the negative 2 in. So we're taking 6 times negative 2 plus 1. That's 6 times negative 1. That's going to give us a negative 6, which is negative. Huh. Okay? And so we have just figured out that we've got a minus sign in our chart over there. And then we're ready for the next test value, 0. We're going to plug that into the second derivative. Okay, so 6 times 0 plus 1, this time we get positive 6, and so there's a plus sign in our sign chart. Mm -hmm. Okay, and now that we've finished the sign chart, it's a matter of figuring out what is that telling us? How can we use it to answer the question? Okay, well, um, a negative second derivative, okay, this negative sign that I'm circling, tells us that our function is concave down, so f is going to be concave down everywhere to the left of negative 1. If we write that as an interval, it's all x values between negative infinity and negative 1. <laughs> okay, and then we're concave up over here on the right where we've got a plus sign. Okay, from x equals negative 1 to infinity. There's the first part of our question answered. Hmm. Okay, and then, remember, they also asked us about inflection points. Okay, inflection point, again, is a place where the concavity of our function changes. And notice that from our sign chart, we can see that negative 1 is such a point. We change from concave down over here to the left to concave up over here to the right because we go from a negative to a positive second derivative. So we've got one inflection point at negative 1. Okay, we'll leave some space to do that calculation. Okay, and again, 
f of negative 1, we're interested in the value of f, the original function at negative 1. Okay, so I'm going to take that negative 1 and plug it into the formula way at the top of the page. Okay, and I'll leave it to you to do that calculation. Um, you should come up with, an, with a number of 16. Okay, that's, 